we'll take a look at just sketching a couple of these examples really quickly before we move on to some other patterns. So what would the sketch of uh, y equals 2x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus x plus 5 look like? And this is a sketch. No, we don't even need to use graph paper, really. Well, this is a degree 4 equation, and it's got a leading coefficient that's positive, so it should look something like an upward-facing w. Degree 4 equation that's positive kind of looks like a w. If I ask you to sketch negative x plus 6, hopefully you can say, oh, that's a degree 1 equation, and it's negative, it'll look like a line going down. And if I say sketch negative 2x cubed plus x, you can say, oh, that's a cubic function, and it's a negative cubic. You can check on the graph, a negative cubic has a certain look, and it looks exactly like this. So that's how we're combining the degree and the leading coefficient to get a quick idea of what do these graphs look like. If you want, you could go grab your graphing calculator. You could sketch these on the graphing calculator using the graphing feature and see if they match. Um, we'll be doing a lot of work with these throughout this unit, so it might be a good idea to uh, stop and do that before you move on to the next part. Okay, there's one other thing that's fairly easy to tell from um, the equation that's given to you, or the function that's given to you, and that's the y-intercept. So the y-intercept happens when the x value is 0, and so if you have a function, so maybe you've got f of x is equal to 3x minus 5, well you might remember this one as y equals mx plus b, and that this plus b is really your y-intercept, so you have b is equal to minus 5. But uh, that's really true because if you make x 0, so if you do 3 times 0 minus 5, this term just becomes 0, and your y-intercept is just negative 5. So if you extend that to a polynomial function where you've got a whole bunch of terms with x's in them, well, when you calculate x is equal to 0, all of these terms become equal to zero that have x's in them, and this last term, which is the constant term, that becomes the y-intercept. So graphically, if you know this picture looks like a cubic, and it is a positive coefficient, which is why I drew it this way, you know that for sure this cubic goes through this point. Now, you don't know whether or not it goes maybe like this cubic, or whether or not it goes like this cubic, but you know for sure that it looks uh, something like one of these cubics, and it definitely goes through that one particular point, which can be really helpful when we get further into this and we're graphing these in a little bit more detail. We can also find x-intercepts, and those are also known as zeros, so let's take a look at that. So these are also, as I said, called zeros, or they're known as roots. They occur when your y value is equal to zero, or f of x is equal to zero. And sometimes that's easy to find out. So f of x is equal to x squared minus x. When do you have x values that are equal to zero? Well, they occur when you have... Uh, f of x is equal to 0, or y is equal to 0, and we go ahead by solving this. And when you solve this, and I'm going to teach you another um, couple of different methods to do this, but the main method that you have right now is factoring. Uh, I know some people will want to do things like move the x to the other side. Don't. Please don't. Please, 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 if you can, use some of the methods that have been taught to you in the past. Uh, factoring, quadratic equation, things like that. The, the number one method that we'll be using will be factoring. And so that means we get something like, well, I factor out a common factor, x minus 1, so either x is 0, uh, this x would be 0, or x minus 1 is 0, which means x is 1. So now you have your two x-intercepts. So now when you're graphing something like this, oh, okay, I know it's an upward-facing parabola because it's degree 2 and the leading coefficient's positive, and I know the uh, 
So, I mean, we actually know quite a bit. We know the shape of the graph has to look like this. We know the uh, y-intercept, well, when x is equal to 0 is 0, so it goes through this point right here. And we also know that it's got some x-intercepts. It's got an x-intercept at 0. Oh, we've already got that one plotted, and it's got one at 1. So really, the only shape that this can take is a u-shape that looks like this. And that's sort of what you were working on last year when you were doing quadratics, and we'll just extend that to other shapes this year. Okay, let's take a look at another example of uh, finding the roots or the x-intercepts. So uh, in this case I have f of x is equal to this cubic 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x minus 4 and I want to go um, first of all try to factor this if I can. Um, this one's a tiny bit tricky to factor this, what you should think about is, is there a common factor to these first two terms? So this is a factoring strategy called factoring by grouping. We have four terms. We try to group the first two and group the last two. Uh, and there's a common factor of 2x in these first two terms. In fact, there's 2x squared of these first two terms. So that leaves over x. And taking out uh, 2x squared from here leaves over 2. And the common factor between these ones is a 2, which leaves over x minus 2. And then this part here is common to both of these. So think about it like this. If you had 2x squared, times a plus 2a, and this is the same as the x minus 2. You could factor that a out. So my next step is going to be x minus 2 times 2x squared plus 2, and then I try to make this part equal to 0. So x minus 2 is 0, so x is 2, and I make this part equal to 0, and 2x squared plus 2 is 0, which is 2x squared is equal to uh, negative 2, or x squared is equal to negative 1, and two numbers multiplied can't give you a negative unless you deal with imaginaries, so this has no extra solutions, and so the only x-intercept to this is 2, and then when I try to sketch it, I know that it is a um, cubic, so uh, that gives me part of the shape. The leading coefficient is positive, so I know that the cubic goes like this, and the only x-intercept is 2. So at 2, I know that I've got the only intercept, so I think it has to go something like this. I don't think that there's another combination that really works. If this dips down any further, it'll hit and make intercepts. If, uh, if you sketched it like this and it hits at 2, then you're missing these other intercepts. There's only one intercept, and in this case that happens at positive 2. We're going to explore this a whole lot more in this unit as well. Let's uh, take a look at another area, which is what are the maximum number of roots that a function can have? And we'll do this quickly just by sketching some graphs. Uh, if you have a parabola, uh, the most number of roots that you can have, um, well, if it goes like this, you don't have any roots, no x-intercepts. If it comes down and it just touches like that, then you get 1. So the most that this one can have is if it looks like this, in which case you have 2. If you go to a cubic, then the most that you can have would be something like this, 3. And if you go to a degree 4 equation, a quartic, the most you could get, I think, is 4. And it turns out that the maximum number of roots is highly, re highly related to the degree. In fact, that's what it is. So even if I just give you, uh, here's a function, and it's like x to the 7th minus 3x to the 5th minus 2x squared minus 1, you have no idea what this thing looks like. And I just say, how many roots does this have at the most? Well, hopefully you realize that that answer is 7. Now, it doesn't mean that it has 7 roots or 7 x-intercepts that you'll necessarily see, but uh, the maximum number of roots that it could possibly have is 7. The minimum number of roots is a little bit trickier, um, but, uh, I mean, 0 in, in number of cases, um, it is a little bit trickier, and you have to think about the pictures and sketch them out a little bit. Uh, to get that. Uh, we'll take a look at that when we actually meet in class.
Okay, the next section is what we call turning points, or a little bit more colloquially, hills and valleys. So a, uh, a degree two equation would look like this, and it would have one valley, or if it was a leading coefficient negative, one hill. Whereas a uh, degree three equation could look like this, or like this, and so um, it would have two hills and valleys at the most. One hill, one valley, so a total of two. This has one hill or one valley. So this one had one hill or valley. This has two hills or valley, so does this one. And then we're looking to see is there a relationship here? Well, as soon as you get four, how many hills? Well, there's a valley, there's a hill, there's a valley. So that's three, even though this is a degree four equation. And so the number of hills and valleys turns out to be highly related to the degree as well. It's just one less than the degree. And that's the maximum number of hills and valleys. So the number of turning points maximum number will be the degree take away one. And the last thing is something called multiplicity. This is uh, fairly straightforward. And basically, if you calculate the roots and you have uh, the same root more than one time, so if one repeats, and remember that's really just an x-intercept, so if you have something like this, uh, this is our example, you, you factored it and for some reason it looks like that, and you say, oh, well x could be equal to zero, or x could be equal to zero, because the first x could be zero, the second x could be zero, or x could be two, or x could be negative one, uh, equal to negative one. This here has a multiplicity of two. So if you have a repeating root, the multiplicity is equal to the number of times you have that repeating root. So if this was a cube here, then you'd have a multiplicity of three. These ones here uh, only repeat one time, so these have, both of these have a multiplicity of only one. And that's it for the notes. I know it's a lot, and it's definitely a lot of vocab. Um, we'll come to class and be ready to practice some of this.